the 2021 NASCAR Xfinity Series ended its regular season with potentially the greatest finish in NASCAR history. I mean, it's hard to top the thriller at Bristol. And I expect the thrill ride to continue with an action-packed playoffs featuring 12 drivers, 3 rounds, and a decent racing product. This race for the championship is going to be a big one. And thus, here it is, the spotter's guide to the 2021 Xfinity Series playoffs. Austin Sindrick will attempt to double up on his 2020 Xfinity Championship and match the car number he will race in his rookie season in Cup. What's on the line is the chance to become the 8th driver to win back-to-back -back Xfinity Championships, and it's a category with some big, big names. Larry Pearson, Randy LaJoy, Sam Ard, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Martin Truex Jr., Ricky Stenhouse Jr., and Tyler Reddick. Now, he and the 22 team aren't as sharp compared to last year, thanks largely in part to his summer slump, one that ended up costing him his second consecutive regular season championship. And really, that's the only flaw or the only thing bringing this team down, especially considering this is a 22, this is a group of guys that have dominated the Xfinity series over the past decade. Only bad luck is going to cost Sinek a championship appearance, and he is arguably the favorite as the back-to-back -back winner at Phoenix dating back to the 2020 championship race. Dinger! Hey! Dinger! Whoops, it looks like I summoned the one from Colorado. Instead, I'm looking for disappeared NASCAR driver AJ Allmendinger, the one that started off hot at JTG, plateaued, and ultimately left NASCAR after the 2018 season. Turns out he can't be found either. We're witnessing a career resurgence like we haven't seen in a long time. In fact, I can't even think of a situation like his off the top of my head. It's just not really a common thing to see drivers re-emerge in this series. AJ Allmendinger is now in his 40s and yet he is racing his best races with Colleague thanks to four wins and the regular season championship. Jason Trenchier is also an unlikely hero for car number 16, leading this team after having no prior crew chief in experience at least on a full-time basis. It's honestly hard not to pull for these guys this fall. One area of concern though, and that is that AJ Allmendinger just hasn't been on the level of Austin Sindrick at Texas Martinsville in Phoenix. He's for sure Sindrick's greatest challenger, and to remain that way, he'll need to carry what he's done in the second half into these playoff races, which I see him doing in great fashion. Justin Allgaier remains the only driver to qualify for every single Xfinity Series postseason. He also leads the series with four Final Four appearances, double the next best, which happens to be Christopher Bell, Cole Custer, Tyler Reddick, and Elliott Sadler. Still, there's no championship on the mantle. Now, I will say, watching Jason Burdett and the Brant number 7 team compete this year, they've cleaned up a lot of their mistakes, with 2021 set to surpass 2020 in top 10s. Only noticeable problem with Allgaier is he just doesn't have the speed of the 16, the 22, and the 54, resulting in just two wins this year. Should be a favorite to make it, but like Allmendinger, just a bit more speed and performance is needed to claim that elusive first championship. For a while, I gotta say, I was getting a bit worried about Noah Gregson. Year 3 in Xfinity, and he was trending towards another disappointing, winless season. Although Homestead was a cakewalk before David Starr just had to cut that tire. Plus, he absolutely dominated the Dash for Cash program this year. Then, just like that, Gregson rolled off consecutive victories at Darlington and Richmond to climb all the way up to the fourth seed. This nine team is getting hot at the right time, but at the same time, David Lenz and the Black Rifle Coffee team just hasn't had that energy and hasn't taken it to the laps lead total. Still, they have the momentum, and Junior Motorsports, they are making a push for this championship in recent weeks. Which is why Noah Gregson finds himself as one of the favorites to make it to Phoenix. Fellow rookie from the 2019 class, Justin Haley, is kinda in the same boat. He's been rock solid once again with Alex Yance, earning himself a lot of consistent top 10 runs. Still, he just hasn't been up to the bar of AJ Allmendinger, and some of that you can say is because Justin Haley, he's a fairly quiet driver. Gets behind the wheel, gets a good finish, and goes home. Nothing wrong with that. But the other part is that the 11 team is just off and far from being the best at calling, trailing that number 16 team. 
And I gotta say, Justin Ailey has a steep mountain to climb if he wants to get back to the championship race in Phoenix. However, if he does make a run at this championship and wins, he not only gets the hardware as he goes to cup, but also the love and affection of his team owner, Matt Colleague. The season Daniel Hemrick has put together so far proves why he'd be better off on a team trying to develop rather than a championship contender. He's consistent, and that's good, but when it comes to Joe Gibbs racing, I don't give a damn about the consistency if you can't win. Not when Ty Gibbs goes out and wins the Daytona Road Course in his first Xfinity start. This is race winning equipment, and he hasn't been able to win. Just like at Brett Kozlowski Racing, just like at RCR, and just like at Junior Motorsports. And next year at Colleague will probably be the same story. Now, I gotta admit, he has potential to get to the championship four, especially as a 30-year-old veteran that does not tear up equipment. Wrecking race cars just isn't in Daniel Hemrick's vocabulary, and I think there's a good chance he can score all top 10s, maybe even all top 5s throughout these NASCAR playoffs to get into the championship race. But after that, do you really think he can beat Cindric and Allmendinger when he hasn't even won a single NASCAR sanctioned race? Until he has that breakout moment, I just cannot get behind driver number 18. I just can't. The problem I had with Jeb Burton going into the season and why I didn't include him in my playoff grid was I thought he and Colleague, they just did not have enough, especially this 10 team. While consistent, they weren't on the levels of the 11 or even the part-time 16 team last year. This, even with a cup experienced driver with Ross Chastain at the helm. However, Jeb didn't take too long to put his exclamation mark on this group, winning his first career race at Talladega. Nowhere near Haley and Allmendinger, but much better than what Ross Chastain did the year before, or at least what he was expected to do. Now he gets to compete in his first ever playoffs, and this could be a rather important one because Jeb Burton does not know where he's going to be racing next year. There's a good chance he's going to be racing for a job. So a decent championship run here would put a few exclamation marks behind his name heading into this offseason. Continuing the winless trio of JGR Xfinity regulars is Harrison Burton. Now I gotta give him some benefit of the doubt. Yes, Burton lost a valuable piece to his team in Ben Bayshore, but going winless considering the year JGR Xfinity has had? That's not a look for a driver who's going to be racing the competitive cup equipment in roughly five months. If there is a bit of positive, the playoff tracks coming up on the calendar really suit his wheelhouse as you got the Texas Fall Race, which Burton is the defending champ after winning the thriller on the final lap. And then he got Martinsville. Harrison won the first ever Xfinity race back in Martinsville since 2006 while as a young driver. Plus, one of the underrated aspects of Harrison Burton is he's rock solid. You don't see him having a bad day, especially as he's riding a streak of 9 straight top 10 finishes. He's got a path to Phoenix, but along the way that 20 car needs to get 54 type speed to truly make a run at this cup. Brandon Jones is back in the Xfinity postseason for the 4th year in a row. And honestly, this is the only good trend of his Xfinity career, although making the playoffs in a Joe Gibbs racing car, come on, that's more of an expectation than a major accomplishment. After that, there's really not much to say. My mind is blank on this team. They don't have any wins and they do not have any consistency. Simply put, Brendan Jones is a mediocre driver and this 19 is a mediocre team. Truly hard to see car number 19 make a serious run at this championship. Myatt Snyder made waves earlier in the season when he stole a win at Homestead. Straight up took it and ran to punch his playoff ticket back in March. And based off of Jeff Burton saying, well Myatt's had a fast car tonight, while not even having a car close to the top 10, you'd think he's doing a pretty good job in this car. It's clear Andy Street hasn't navigated him to his proper destination. So bad that this team went 3 months with just one top 15 finish. I'm not exaggerating this, an RCR team, not even two years removed from an Xfinity championship, got one top 15 finish in the summer. Yet, for me, the most mind-boggling part about this team is that Colleague Racing is the satellite to this exact team. That's right, it's Colleague gauging off of their success, not the other way around. This two team is not good at all, so I will be shocked, borderline shocked, if Myatt Snyder gets past the first round. 
because let's be honest, this team does not deserve to be in the playoffs. Yes, they won a race, but still, this team is nowhere near championship contention at all. Where Ryan Sieg and Brandon Brown faltered, Jeremy Clemens stepped up, qualifying for his second career Xfinity playoffs on the back of new crew chief Mark Setzer. And I gotta say, he has really made this 51 team better, with Clemens already scoring a career-high top 10s, and he is well on pace to end 2021 with his best career average finish. For an independent owner to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tony Stewart and Joe Gibbs and almost beat them in the regular season point standings is impressive, and that definitely deserves a round of applause. Now, it's gonna be hard to make it to Phoenix or the round of eight with his budget, but this 51 team, they have overachieved. Arguably the biggest surprise of this year by a long shot. Okay, let's be honest. If Michael Annette doesn't get the injury, Riley Herbst likely goes into the final few races of the regular season in a Stuart Haas car, toughing it out for the final playoff spot. Even though I don't like saying this, you can almost call this a Mickey Mouse playoff berth with how the 98 season has gone. Now, unfortunately, almost everyone has put 100% of the blame on Riley Herbst, which I gotta say is ludicrous. Yes, he's underperformed a bit. He's made a lot of mistakes in that car, but there are many other factors as to why this team has struggled this year. First, of course, the dude's been plagued by some straight-up bad luck on some occasions. See, the Daytona Road Course, Las Vegas, and Darlington. Also, like in the Cup Series, I know everyone's talked about Strudos race, and you've got to look at the struggles of the organization. Kevin Harvick doesn't have a win. The other three Cup cars wouldn't even be in the top 20 in the Cup Series points had Eric Amarola not went out and won to make the Cup Series playoffs. Riley Herbst is not the biggest issue of this team. It's the organization. That includes the Xfinity operation. And with that, I don't have a lot of confidence in a deep playoff run from Richard Boswell and crew especially with the deep hole they already find themselves in. Like the NASCAR Cup Series, Las Vegas, Talladega, and the Charlotte Roval make up a chaotic round of 12. The round of 8 then sees the Xfinity-powered series race at Texas, Kansas, and Martinsville to slice the remaining playoff field in half. That successful half to come out of those three races will then duke it out for the championship in the desert, Phoenix or Avondale, Arizona to be precise. Fortunately, nobody is locked in yet to the next round, so every driver is still fair game in my 2021 Xfinity playoff predictions. In the round of 12, I have Myatt Snyder, Brandon Jones, Jeremy Clements, and Riley Herbst out. Most of these guys just have not shown a lot of speed this year, and they will need to really shine at Talladega or the Charlotte Roval. The round of 8 gets a bit trickier, but out of the 8 that make it, I've got 2 cars from Colleague and 2 from Joe Gibbs Racing missing the cut. With these four teams, they're good. They're solid teams. They could make it to Phoenix, but I just don't think they're going to have enough in the end. Thus, we have the ultimate championship four and my predictions for who's going to compete in Phoenix. I think Noah Gregson gains redemption from last year and punches his ticket to the championship at Texas. Justin Allgaier wins in front of his hometown fans, and Austin Sindrick takes the battle at Martinsville to lock in his ticket. This could potentially be one of the best Xfinity Championship 4s ever that can easily create a moment like Bristol. One that will be remembered in NASCAR history and we'll see over these next couple races whether that prediction can hold up. I surely hope it does. So anyways, this is NRF signing out and just remember, life's a beach and then you drive.